Okay, once again, welcome to our episodes. So, in this episodes, I'm going to talk about more on God. Of course, there are many things we can use about God. We can say that God is a supreme being. You know? God is the creator. You know? So, all those things, you know? all those things, are things that we can consider about God. But the fact remains the same as a Christians or whatever our religion is, it is fundamental that we need to know the existence of God. Not exactly the detail because God is God. If we know everything in detail about God, even the small things about God then we can say that God is no more God because He, God would be subjected with our knowledge, our intellect God is not subject or nor object of our intellect and knowledge because before our knowledge comes before our intellectuality comes all those things God placed in human being all those knowledge, intelligence, no? So as we see, nowadays scientists putting something in their, what do you call that? In their, in their invention, putting uh, artificial intelligence, but that is limited. No, limited. But the intelligence that God gave to us is vast no? and so huge that we can understand everything about God we can know about God and at the same time we can be a co-creator of God because of that God placed us a godly intelligence you know, a heavenly intelligence and that heavenly intelligence is more superior than anything else Okay. later on I will talk about that uh, heavenly intelligence but for now we are going to talk about God because since God is our creator then it is it is equally important that we have to know God that convincingly within ourselves we need to know that there is God that God exists no? not a material things that it should be subjected in the laboratory and then we can say, oh, this part is a part of God. This another part is a part of God. No. We need to understand God in the sense that we can praise Him. No? We can praise Him. We can love Him. We can glorify Him. And then, at the same time, for us to understand our relationship to God. Because we need to know who is God. And then, I tell you, God is God. Even the Bible say to us only the things that God is God. So, let us take our Bible references. May I quote from the Bible? So, it says in Exodus 3.14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So the scenario surrounding these Bible verses is no Moses or there are meetings no they are encountered by God and Moses and then God said to Moses you need to go to Egypt and proclaim my existence at the same time proclaim the liberation of the Israelites liberation from Egypt and then of course Moses lived in the Pharaoh he has a limited knowledge about the God of Israel the God of Christianity no? so that means say Moses asks who are you if you are going to send me who are you and then said, God said 
I am who I am. So therefore, there is no detail that God gave to Moses. That means, in that sentence, in that statement of God, it only says that it is enough for you to know that I exist. This verses Exodus 3.14 give us the idea that it is enough for us to know that God exists. Nothing less, nothing more. Because God concern for man is for man to know that He exists. No? And we cannot subject God to a laboratory test to find the detail of God. No? Which part is this part? Which part is this part? No. Because God has a nature. No? And then there is a nature that God that only be seen, can only be experienced by us. Especially, God always deal with us by His Spirit. So that means we can say that God Himself as He is not only a spirit, but God He is not only a spirit, but God is God. And then there is God, and then the, there is a spirit of God. No? And the Spirit of God, this is the one that is working in mankind. No? The one that is working with mankind, help mankind. And then the other one is the Holy Spirit that comfort us in times of our loneliness. No? In times of our difficulties, there is, there is somebody or someone who is comforting us. So that means the Exodus 3.14, it says, I am who I am. That means number one rule is, and is it enough for us to know that God exists. And then we need to experience God. It is not only by our intelligence, but by our heart. We have to know God by our heart to experience God. Because the, the best way to convince ourselves that there is God is by means of our experience that we have some encounter with God just like Moses De Daniel David no? Adam and Eve Ab Abel and Cain so there is an encounter with God and that is only possible when we come to a intimate relationship with God apart from that intimate you know, relationship we cannot you know, we cannot experience God and that is the reason that our Lord Jesus Christ said no one seen God except the Son except the Lord Jesus Christ so how the Lord Jesus Christ see God you know, and then that is his personal thing no of course we want to know how how the lord jesus christ see god but that is more on personal level that we cannot we cannot we cannot have the same experiences just like our lord and savior jesus christ so the bible testify that god exists whether we believe it or not whether we like it or not then God exists just like the air. No? We feel the air, but we cannot see the air. So that means that is important that we have to know that God is exists as Exodus 3.14 says. And another, in John chapter 5, verse 26, For as just as the Father is life in himself, even so, He gave to the Son also to have life in Himself. So that means nobody create God. No? Nor He, nor He create Himself. No. The Bible testified that that said that God 
just exist. God is love and just exist and God has life. And then we partake about that life of the existence of God. So that means God is self-existing life. Self-generating life. Nobody create the life of God. But God is God. God is God. Then, another in Acts 17. Acts 17, chapter... Uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 24. The God who made the world and all things in it, since He is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in the temples made with men. So one thing from these Bible verses, it says that God created all things. Then, as God created all things, He is not dwelling. No? So that means you will not be able to see, oh, this is God. No, we cannot say that these things is God. No? Even God created this one. For example, we will not we cannot say that this is God. No? We can only say that God created this. That God created the universe. That God created the heaven and earth. And then we cannot have some some uh, some like uh, engineering explanation about how God creates but there is a record how God create the creation okay then so one thing more to consider in this Bible says Acts 17.24 it says that God does not dwell in temples okay he doesn't dwell in temples then where God can dwell. When we say God is dwelling, we are not we are not referring to the God itself, no? To the God itself, because there is a different the Spirit of God and then God itself. So that means when we say God is dwelling, that is not the God, the God Himself, but the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will dwell in man, in all mankind. That is the reason says. You are the temple of God, and God dwells in you. In Corinthians says, You are the temple of God, and God dwells in you. So, how God will dwell? Which God will dwell in? That is the Spirit of God. Because God is best. No? God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is beyond the cosmos. He is beyond the universe. He is beyond the universe of universe. Yeah? Before there is a universe, there is already God. Yeah? Okay? Before the universe is there, there is already God. Okay? And God created. So the fact says that the Bible testifies that God is existing. And then we will not be able to see God by our own naked eye. As the Bible said, no? how you can see? There is only two things that you can see God. By having a pure heart. By using your heart. But we will not see God. But can we see God as Himself? No. We will only experience the Spirit of God. Yes. Just like experiencing the Holy Spirit. God exists. God is God. Okay? And another from the Bible. In Revelation, I am the Alpha. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. So that means God is the beginning and the end. So we cannot combine God in laboratory, in a test tube, or even in our human intellect. 
what we can complain about God is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah? And that is only the thing that we could use in the, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. These are only the things that we will be able to see with our naked eye. We will be able to experience by our heart no? the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and then our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that means for God, for God, it is up no? for us to know that there is God. Beyond that, we need to leave it to God. Because if we if we are able to subject God in a laboratory test, laboratory findings, etc., blah, 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 then no more. He is no longer God. We might say that we no longer God. Okay? So that means that God is God. In Psalms chapter 90 verse 2, it says, before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So that means this indicate that before this earth, there is already God. Before the universe and the universe, there is already God. Before God, before there is a universe, there is already God. And then we cannot combine God in small things or in just in one place or two places or in a huge place. Because God is beyond time and space. God is beyond creation. God is beyond the universe itself hmm? so that means what the Bible implicate hmm, to us with this how many Bible verses Exodus 3 14 John chapter 5 verse 26 Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 and then some hmm, chapter 90 verse 2 it, that only indicate that it is up to us hmm, it is enough for us to know that there is God. The details of God, it is not subject of human intelligence. Even how much we are curious, how much we are very intelligent scientists, we will not be able to subject God in a laboratory test. We can only experience God, we can only see God by means of our pure heart, by means of our relationship with God. So the best way to experience God is to have relationship with God. Huh? Just like when we have our friends. Oh, when you are together experiencing your camaraderie no? and oneness, give and take action, and then you say, yeah, I know you now. We know a person by means of togetherness. So similarly, to know God intimately, we need to be together with God. No? We will not be able to understand God if our attitude is like an attitude of scientists. Our attitude to God must be the attitude of a children. Children of God. The attitude of a child towards his parents. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ introduced God, He says, Moses introduced God, says, God is God. I am who I am. God is God. Then, eventually, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, God is our Heavenly Father. In Matthew chapter 6, God is our Heavenly Father. And there are many Bible verses that say that God is our Father. Because if there is some more 
to understand about God, then that will not be that our Lord and Jesus Christ will not hesitate to tell us more what He tell us in the Gospel. But to understand the purpose of God, the goal of human life, why God created us, then we can study it. And then God will give us the knowledge. As God said in Amos 3.7, God does nothing without revealing His secrets to His prophet and saints. God will let us know that He exists. God will let us know His purpose and plan. God will let us know why we are suffering. God will let us know how we can come back to God. Because God is God and God will surely reveal Himself to us. Reveal Himself to us not in the way that we see God in a laboratory, but we will see God in our heart, in our experiences. Not by our own naked eye. Because to understand all the problems about the universe is we need to understand God. And the first way to understand God is God is God that God exists. And then to know more about God's existence is we need to experience God. Without experiencing God, then there is no way to see God because God is beyond our senses. God is beyond our senses. We can only experience God by means of our heart. Mm -hmm. And then, in that sense, if we want to know God, you know, then we need to use our heart. Just like God said in Jeremiah, if you want to find me, if you are searching for me, then search me with your heart and your heart will be the compass the heart will navigate us to know God and to understand God so that means our goal in life you know, our attitude in life of faith is to understand that God is God that God exists that God exists and then we need to experience God and then God God will let us experience I myself personally how do I understand God how do I see God first I need to use I use my heart and then I use my experiences And that is the way to see God. Not by our own eyes, but to see God by our heart. And our desire to know and love God. Our desire, our heart, our desire to know and love God will drive us to find God. And then once we find God, we will find contentment and happiness in our life. Because... God is everything. And then we can experience God. Because God will not hesitate you know, to let us experience His existence. And then, then we can experience God by His, His Spirit. The Spirit of God will let us experience God. And then the Holy Spirit will guide us. And the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will help us to understand more about God. Okay? So I have to remember, God is God. Okay, once again, thank you for these episodes. I hope you are there listening and watching. So if you like this, please like, share, and comments and subscribe please like share comments and 
subscribes. Once again, thank you and see you soon in our next episode. God bless.